The Oregon Ducks prove that they are the Big Ten's best, at least for now, after Saturday night's win, a huge win over previously number two ranked Ohio State. But just how much is the rest of the Big Ten looking up at those Ducks that are flying awfully high right now? We look at the top of the conference. We look at the middle of the conference as we go around this big nation. From Pasadena to Piscataway, College Park to the Coliseum, Seattle to State College, Columbus to Camp Randall, the Zoo to the Rock, and everywhere in between. This is where Big Ten fans gather to talk America's premier national conference with your host, Big Ten Ted. All Big Ten, all year long. This is Big Nation. They are known as that team out west, but maybe the social media and marketing department at the University of Oregon needs to change one of those words. That to the. I think Oregon is becoming, maybe they've become already, the team out west. Of course, the major competition out on the west coast to have that title is the USC Trojans. Look where USC is right now. Look where Oregon is right now. Look at where they are on the field. Look at where they, where they are off the field on the recruiting trail where Dan Lanning is kicking some tail. Oregon is going into places like Southern California, going into a place like Matter Day and getting some big time commits after a win like this against Ohio State. USC is sitting at three and three, questions about their future. Oregon right now is sitting at six and oh, and they are on an absolute tear. West of the Mississippi River, those four schools out on the West Coast in the Big Ten right now, Oregon is certainly that program. Not only in that geographical region, but of course they proved nationwide across this great nationwide conference that we love in the Big Ten that they are the man. And what happens when you become the man? You become the hunted. Now how does Oregon respond after a win like this? After a statement like this, where does Dan Lanning have this team going forward? Dan Lanning spent time under Nick Saban. Pull out that rat poison line because that's where Oregon is going to be in the remainder of their schedule. Now, the remainder of their schedule is very favorable. But this is college football. How do the Oregon Ducks respond now being the man, because to be the man, you got to beat the man. And that's exactly what the Oregon Ducks did this weekend. You look at what's coming up schedule-wise here for the Oregon Ducks in the rest of the season. And the matchup for those of you on YouTube, the graphic for those of you on YouTube, up, it's the matchups are pretty good. They're pretty good. This Friday night, they got to go on the road to Purdue. Maybe preseason, we thought that this was a Purdue team that would improve or Oregon coming off an emotional game. But that is, this is not the, even though Purdue had a much better, they showed some fight against Illinois this weekend. This is not the Purdue team of old, Jeff Brom teams of old, where they could pull this kinds of upset. Oregon, and you're going to hear a lot of this. You heard a lot about it during the offseason, and you're going to hear a lot of it now. Oregon's depth of talent puts them in that position to be the leader in the clubhouse. Michigan is not in that upper echelon of the Big Ten, which I'm going to talk about as this commentary progresses because they can't throw the ball and they can't defend the pass. All right, so Michigan is not as elite in maybe some places we thought that their team would be able to carry them this season. But once again, this is college football. That November 16th game at Wisconsin is interesting. We know Oregon has much more talent than the Wisconsin Badgers. I'm man enough to admit that, certainly as a Badger fan uh, right now. But that's a game late in the year. This is a Wisconsin team that's playing a little bit better right now. But you look at the remainder of the schedule, and I said it after that game when Oregon beat Ohio State. They are staring 12-0 and in the face. But now how does this program adjust? Dan Lanning has that big win in his back pocket. And now everybody, including yours truly, is telling them how great they are. And they deserve all the credit, by the way. They deserve people like me talking about them at nauseum since Saturday. But how will they respond now that they are the top dog 
When you talk about who's looking up at Oregon, how many teams are looking up at Oregon, what's the distance that the eyeball travels to meet the Oregon duck in the sky, there's one phrase that is used a lot in life that really rings true. The more things change, the more they stay the same. The Big Ten Conference, the East and the West split, it was fairly obvious there at this time of year, most years, it was a three-team conference. Now, as you got further on during the season and Penn State wasn't able to get it done in the middle of the year, it became a two-team league with Ohio State and with Michigan. What's happened this year? Oregon has essentially just replaced Michigan, right? You've still got Ohio State in the race. You've still got Penn State in the race. You've got three teams, and then I think you draw a pretty bold line. What happens when you get past those three teams? I think once you get to the middle of the Big Ten, there's a lot of parity in the Big Ten, but I think those teams in the middle, I think, are looking up at the depth of talent at places like Oregon and Ohio State and even a place like Penn State right now. Like, you look at some of those teams outside of the top three, you're looking like an Indiana. Look, Northwestern took Indiana, and they were going back and forth with them in the, in the third quarter, middle of the third quarter, before Indiana pulled away in that last game. Now, Northwestern was able to put the whooping on Maryland 37-10 to 10 on Friday night. So maybe Northwestern is not that bottom tier of the Big Ten team that we all thought. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying Maryland is world beaters right now. They got a lot of questions. We're going to be talking about the Terps a, a little bit later on during this week. But Indiana is still a little bit unproven right now. I love what Kurt Signetti has done in such a short period of time in Bloomington, Indiana. But when you look at the top three of the Big Ten right now, James Franklin, Ryan Day, Dan Lanning, and Dan Lanning is the, uh, you know, youngest, we'll say, uh, of these coaches, the youngest culture in what he's building right now at Oregon. He, and he's the one that just got the big marquee victory, right? Those are established top 10 to top 15 level cultures and programs right now. And then you look at the rest of the Big Ten, I think there is a sizable gap between the top three in the middle. I talked about Indiana. Look at a team like Illinois, Right, They gave up 42 points in regulation to a team that we thought was the worst team in the Big Ten, starting a backup quarterback on the road in Champaign, Illinois. 50-49, to 49, Illinois overcame it. But once again, I think it speaks to the depth and the parity, which is a lot better in the middle of the conference. The middle is bigger because you've got teams like Michigan. You've got teams like USC that are in the middle. Like I thought USC, how they were playing earlier in the season – I thought that this was a team that was maybe going to be in that playoff conversation. That was maybe going to be in that Big Ten championship type of conversation. But there's a lot of dynamics, folks, with the Big Ten. There's a lot of dynamics with college football from week to week. And USC, I think, has been the main culprit of that. And they've certainly dropped, once again, to the middle, this jam-packed middle of the Big Ten Conference. I mentioned Michigan already. You throw out teams like Iowa. You throw out teams like Nebraska and Minnesota. You know, all of these teams, what do they all have in common? Okay, they might even be great at one thing. Like, look at Caleb Johnson over at Iowa. He's one of the nation's best running backs. But what about this past game? The great thing about those teams at the top, Oregon and Ohio State and Penn State, is they have great players all over the place, and they're complete football teams. Like, you look at a team like the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They have a great defense, but right now... Their offense might be struggling a little bit, especially their passing offense might be struggling uh, a little bit right now in Lincoln, Nebraska, right? They, they got to get that going a little bit more and start to put more points in the scoreboard, okay? Oregon, Ohio State, and Penn State can beat you any way they choose to beat you. You remember that saying for people that have watched this show before? I said that about Michigan last year. They could run the ball down your throat. They could play great defense. J.J. McCarthy could go back and throw the football. There's a variety of ways that even when those top three teams are not playing their best day, even when they're playing an average game by their standards, okay, Penn State down 20 to 6 on the road at USC, they still find a way to come back. They have great players at so many more positions than maybe some of these teams in the middle of the Big Ten. They can overcome it. And there have been examples of that so far this season. If Ohio State is looking up at Oregon, it's not that much. It's like a, 
Right, that, that, that's what it is right now. Um, Autzen Stadium, I think, played a significant factor in this game. Look, not taking anything away from the Oregon Ducks. We know how good of a football team they are. Look, I, I've praised them a lot since Saturday. I play, praised them a lot during the offseason, leading up to the season, what they've done, building a roster like this. But, you know, if these two teams meet in Indianapolis, which is right in the backyard of Columbus, Ohio, Oregon fans have to travel across the country. They will cra- travel across the country, by the way. You put them on a, to a more neutral site environment, and you might have a little bit of a different result. That's up to you what your opinion is on how much the crowd impacted this game. It was a play here and a play there that was the difference between the Ohio State Buckeyes and the Oregon Ducks. Ohio State is not looking up at Oregon all that much. Now, I think Penn State is looking up. I think, you know, you could even divide divide this top tier into Oregon and Ohio State, and then Penn State just a little bit of a smidge down right now. Now, the thing I really like about Penn State this year is they have the star power close to the star power that they had in 2016 and 2017. All right, they they haven't had the star power that's on this 2024 team. I don't think you've really seen that since those Trace McSorley and Saquon Barkley teams at Penn State University. Like Drew Aller, this game against USC, and I know he threw three interceptions, which is kind of weird that we're talking about it in this vein. But the thing with Drew Aller right now, I think this game really proved to a lot of maybe the naysayers out there about 15 and blue and white that he can lead a team that when the run game isn't working, that he can throw a team back into a football game. Tyler Warren is a superstar pass catcher. We know all about the run game combination. We know all about the, the pass rushers, the edge rushers with, with Abdul Carter and Denai Dennis Sutton. We can't forget, a, forget about our boy Zane Durant in the middle there as well. There are superstars on this Penn State team. I just don't know if they have as much depth of talent as Ohio State does or Oregon does. The beauty about all of this, we're going to find out on the first Saturday in November if Penn State has enough to get it done when they host the Ohio State Buckeyes. So that's a big prove-it game uh, right now. Oregon is certainly in that driver's seat right now within the Big Ten Conference. Will they remain in that driver's seat They are certainly going to be taking everybody's best shot the rest of the way. I want to know what you guys think. Just how much are certain teams in the Big Ten looking up at the Oregon Ducks right now? I want to hear all of your thoughts on this in the comments below. I'm Big Ten Ted. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching and listening to Big Nation. Make sure to subscribe and follow Big Ten Ted on X, YouTube, and podcast platforms to stay in the know on all things Big Ten football.